many times do I have to tell you? <laughs> Until it gets real, I guess. Um, parents complain that they keep repeating the same things to their children. As a teacher, I keep repeating the same stuff to my students. Uh, and what is this stuff? These things are the obvious things. And they frustrate us very much because they are so obvious, so everyone should get them clear. But do we get them clear? We don't. Uh, the things that we always remember are the things that are <laughs> exotic, that are shocking. So you might remember for all of your life that, I don't know, your parents I had a fight of their lifetime when you were a kid, but you will all, but you will keep forgetting. So I don't know, wash the dishes, or I don't know, drop your jacket, right? And that applies that thing, that wisdom. I mean, this truth applies to all of us. It does not depend on how old we are. And actually, now I'm addressing the mothers, yes. So answering your question that you keep addressing. Uh, to your children, how many times do I have to tell you all the freaking time, every single day, until it gets real? And when will it get real? Well, let me just tell you. Someday. And most probably, that will be the moment when you won't be here with them anymore to see how they are bravely washing their dishes, doing up their jackets, sweeping the floors, and uh, doing their homework. Or not, actually, not their homework, but their children's homework. Because this is why you have become a mother, to bring to this world new human beings that will one day have lives of their own. You don't have children for yourself, even though your biology tells you differently. But we are, we are children of heavens, we are children of the divine, and we know higher purposes, or we actually try to um, understand the higher purposes, right? This is why we are here. Most probably you will never, ever, ever see the day when they finally get things right. And don't expect them to. Don't. Because it's not for fun that you have ever had them. Families uh, will be forever families forever. Well, yeah, okay, but it's not going to be the same family, you know, because once we get to the celestial kingdom, it won't be your, like, I know, high street or like main square or something when you were playing around with your classmates. No, um, this is going to be the celestial kingdom. Uh, yeah, well, well, this is the promise that we have in the Book of Mormon, right? That all the body parts will be in the right place. We will be healthy, beautiful. It won't be the same. It won't. I mean, guys, even if you keep living in the same place where you have been living for all your lives, um, hasn't it changed? <laughs> Not even a bit. It has. And the celestial kingdom is different. And there, there we have, we will have different callings, right? Yes, you will be with your mom and your dad. But they won't be the same mom, the same dad. They will be something different, something higher. Keep that in mind. Because, you know, like, nurturing our childish beliefs about our lives doesn't only make religion funny and easy to mock and irresponsible, but it also nurtures your irres irresponsibility in your earthly life. This is why being stuck to the idea of mommy and daddy being always there and like things being always the same makes people, makes it hard for people to leave, mentally <coughs> leave their families and start a new life. So, you know, preparing for the celestial kingdom actually, in a way, <laughs> nurtures responsibility to leave and to be like all the protagonists of the Book of Mormon at some point at a different stage and start new lives all alone with a hope for a better future you know 
And the Book of Mormon tells us stories of leaving places. The Old Testament tells us stories of leaving places and um, always makes us go to the unknown. And what is there in this unknown? Well, what we find there is what we build there, what we have there. Uh, the, so the people of Moses uh, came at some point to the Promised Land and there was nothing there. Why? Because this paradise that was supposed to be there is their responsibility, is something that they should build, right? And the same goes for the Celestial Kingdom. If there, if there truly are like those streets paved with gold and those palaces made of fire and crystal, it only means that somebody was building them there. These are you guys, okay? So, no, there, are, there, is, there is no price for what you're doing in this life. There is no price in, for what you're doing in the Celestial Kingdom. You, by, by keeping the commandments of God, you are blazing your way to a new responsible life, earthly life and celestial life. Stop being children, stop being children, stop being children. And if you're watching this video and you're like 14, as soon as possible. If you're watching this video and you are 30, okay, just start from here. Like, there is always time to grow up. If you're watching this video and you are 57, start from here, okay? The fairy tales over. Uh, and the uh, fairy tales from the Book of Mormon should actually inspire you to stick down to earth and start being responsible, even if this is the last year of your life, maybe especially if this is going to be the last year. Faith in God is not faith in afterlife. Religion is not believing in the stories of the Bible and the stories of the Book of Mormon or any other scripture. No, uh, uh, the scripture is to inspire you. And um, believing in God is actually and like where we come from, like that we are uh, literally sons and daughters of the heavenly parents makes us think of the earth, of planet earth, as something we have to look after uh, and other human beings as our brothers and sisters. So religion, as uh, James the Apostle wonderfully puts it, is to look after the orphans and the widows and the afflicted, as we also might add at this point and stand tall, right, and keep the commandments. Why? To be strong. Why? The religion is here, our religion, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, is to console us and to give us, give us strength to be for others, to be for planet Earth and to be for other human beings, right? Uh, the This life is miraculous. Why? Because it's full of coincidences. If there are no coincidences, there are no miracles. God is God of miracles because he allows for coincidences. And the coincidences are those miracles of the world. This is why he's God of, of miracles. He allows for coincidences that sometimes make no sense. And it is our responsibility to like make some sound sense out of that. Right? If there are no coincidences, as people boldly state at times, it means that everything was planned and God is mean, he's tricky, like he's leading us somewhere, like literally, uh, he's not looking after us, no, he makes us culprit, irresponsible beings, but if he allows for coincidences, if God allows for coincidences, it makes life wonderfully miraculous, it makes us free to choose to make the sense of life that we want to make of it. And, and the coincidences, those miracles of life, make life an event we are responsible for. 
and moment we are, we are responsible for that is only single and given to us only once and it is vested on us as a journey full of miracles how miraculous are they is on us in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen